Shalom and welcome to our show. We cover many topics on this show, and even though we like producing colorful shows on location in Israel at this time in history, we also feel it's really important to interview outstanding individuals in various areas, including politics. We often hear how people are fed up with politics as usual, and the need for new leaders who really care to address the issues and make a positive difference is something we all should be concerned with. With that in mind, our highly regarded guest today is Laurie Berman, who has a long record of community services and many leadership positions, in addition to a dedication to Israel and to Jewish life. Later in the show, we'll also meet her husband, Dr. Jeff Ganellis, but first, Lori will share her views with us following these messages. Four bombs in nine days in Jerusalem, Ashkelon, Tel Aviv, dozens murdered, scores wounded. Indeed, America lost its own children in these attacks. We know your pain is unimaginable and to some extent unshareable but America grieves with you and prays that you will be comforted among the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. Israel has opened up to the world since the peace process started. And as a result of that, Israel communicates with so many countries it never communicated with. So we live through a time where the economy grows, many more Jews do come to Israel. We have successfully absorbed close to 700,000 people. And if we do have to emphasize any special area where we should really put our and concentrate our efforts it's to bring many more young people to the table and to try and bring the younger generation to be bonded to Israel, to travel to Israel, to be exposed to what takes place in Israel, to recognize the success story of Israel.
With us now is Laurie Berman. Laurie, it's a real pleasure having you with us today. Nice to be with you. Finally, we're able to make it happen. I'd like to ask you, at this time in history, how do you see the challenges facing Florida as a state in general? I think the state has a lot of challenges right now. Our, our legislature in Tallahassee is very much out of control. We need to start being leaders in creating jobs for the state, in the green economy, and in the environmental field, and making sure that our state doesn't have oil and toxins here. We also need to spend money on education and make sure that we are teaching all of our children how to be part of the labor force of the 21st century. It's time for Florida to have new leadership and a new direction. And is this the reason why you decided after your illustrious career in so many other areas to actually to some degree possibly abandon some areas and get now into politics? Absolutely. I'm, I am an attorney by profession and I did work for Congressman Robert Wexler, but I was concerned with what I see going on in our, in our government and so I took the step forward of running for office right now. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you've done prior to making this big choice. Sure, absolutely. In addition to practicing law and working for the congressman, I've been very much an activist. I've worked in my children's schools. I've worked in for the South Palm Beach County Jewish Federation. I've worked in a variety of civic and organizations. And I feel that we all need to give back to the community. And I've tried to be a leader in a variety of areas in the community. Laurie, I'd like to ask you a little bit about family concerns. How do you feel as a parent, the mother of two children, how do you feel that the family has changed from the way it used to be when you were a little girl growing up in the States? I, I actually grew up here in Florida and I love growing up here in Florida and I want my children to be able to grow up in, here in Florida but I really have a lot of concerns. I think people do move away and then there's a, lot, a lack of family between when people move away there's not as much contact. Um, my two children right now are in college and when I decided to run, I asked my son, I said, Stephen, what do you think about me running? And he said, Mom, what do you want your legacy to be? And I thought that was a really insightful comment for an 18-year-old. And I want my legacy to be that I can make a difference in, the, in this state. And my children have been really supportive in the campaign. Um, when they've been home, which is not very often, they've been out with me going door to door, knocking on people's door. They come to campaign events, they wear t-shirts, they pass out, the, out literature for me. And they know that I'm running so that their lives, that they can come and live in Florida. I want all families to be able to prosper in this state. And I think that we need to create jobs in this state so that all of our children will be able to move back here and live here in South Florida. We need to start to develop our biotech industry so that there'll be those kinds of jobs. We have Scripps, we have Max Planck. Let's get the knowledge-based industries here in the state. We can also develop our green industries. There's so many entrepreneurs who are out there in the green field doing solar, doing wind. If we can develop those fields, then all of our families can prosper here in the state of Florida. And what disturbs me in that subject matter is that we do have the technology in our world to use creativity and implement wonderful solutions that would provide far better alternatives as far as powering our cars, um, electricity in general. It is just uh, horrendous to me that, that uh, all sorts of other questionable interests prevent the implementation of intelligent solutions. What are your thoughts with regards to that? I, I totally agree with you. I mean, we know that in Israel, they're starting to develop electric cars and they're looking into having an electric car grid. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we've become so dependent on fossil fuels and we haven't spent the time or the money to really develop these alternative industries, alternative and renewable fuel industries, I should say. Um, I do think it's a huge problem that it hasn't been a focus of our administration. And I do think that with time that the administration will start to, to address these issues. I mean, we know, we see what goes on in the world. We cannot continue to be dependent on fossil fuels the way we are. It's time for us to start to take the lead in technology and really have a green economy here in the United States. What you say brings to mind a documentary I saw called who killed the electric car. They had these hundreds of thousands of wonderful GM cars 12 years ago that were running just beautifully and they were destroyed for all sorts of very, very dubious reasons. 
But on a more positive subject, I know you care about all people here in Florida and elsewhere in the world, and of course in Israel. What are your thoughts with regard to the challenges facing Israel at this time? Um, I totally support the people of Israel. I've been to Israel many times, and I know that there are a lot of challenges facing Israel, but I do believe that the United States needs to be an ally of Israel and will continue to be an ally of Israel. And I think we need to do everything we can here to support Israel. If it means um, one thing that was done in the state, con uh, Sen State Senator Ted Deutsch passed a law that we divested from Iran. Um, we also, in the state of Florida, are a huge purchaser of Israel bonds, and I will continue to advocate that the state should be purchasing Israel bonds. So whatever can be done on the state level to support Israel, I will absolutely be working for. How do you see the future with regard to social values? I was thinking the other day, looking at my children watching television, I was thinking how people are so distracted and seduced by mindless entertainment and don't read enough books and so forth. Do you feel that there is a deterioration of family values in this day and age? Well, I wouldn't, know, I wouldn't necessarily use the word family values, but I, I think what you were talking about, the distractions, is very much a problem with the next generation. I mean, we've raised an entire generation that, where the kids at eight years old get cell phones, where they have Nintendos, where they are all addicted to Facebook, and they don't have as much human interaction as we have among our generation. And I think it's a real challenge, and it's something that we're going to need to do in terms of reading books, um, you know, newspapers are, are suffering tremendously because people don't read. Um, book readership has been down a little bit, but thanks to someone like Oprah, book readership is starting to rise a little bit. So I think we as parents need to set the example and we need to encourage our children to have more inter human interaction, to continue to read newspapers and read books. But I do think that the next generation will be different no question, because they've had different influences growing up in their lives, and those influences have played a significant role. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all develops, but I think we need to continue to engage our children and to make sure they are part of society and have the same values and morals that we have. No question. Some of your supporters have whispered that they see a future for you in which you not only uh, are active in politics in Florida, but as soon as possible nationally. What message would you bring uh, to the voters out there with regards to your plans for the future? Um, I'm very flattered. Thank you very much for saying that. But for right now, my real goal is to be a state representative and serve in the state legislature. We have term limits in this state, and you are only allowed to serve four terms. And I would love to be able to serve out four terms as a state representative. That would be an honor for me. Um, I definitely want to be a leader in our society and, and have a leadership role, and I think this is a wonderful place for me to start, and I hope that it will grow to other things, but for now I am very excited for, to hopefully be able to be a leader in our state. Lori, this has been very interesting, and I would certainly like to wish you the very, very best. Have, hope to have you on the show again in the near future. Thank, Thank you, you for being with much. us. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, and I really enjoyed it. Thanks. My pleasure. I'll be right back. With us now is Dr. Jeff Ganellis. Jeff, it's a great pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Richard. It's been a while I've been chasing you to do this interview, but you've been so busy. I'm delighted to have you on the show finally. I'm glad I could finally work out the time for you. These are strange times in history. And uh, here we are, another summer in Florida. How do you see the challenges facing the United States of America at this time in history in general? I think we're really at somewhat of a historic time. And I, probably everybody says that whenever they answer a question like that. But we have so many issues that are coming to the front right now. We have to figure out who our identity is. Uh, we have to decide, are we really going to preserve our values? Are we going to preserve our environment? Are we going to invest in our kids? And uh, we have uh, some really historic kinds of issues ahead of us. We have energy, we have defense, we have foreign policy, we have energy, um, education, I'm sorry. Uh, 
And uh, there are so many tough decisions that need to be made. It really is kind of a, a, a difficult time, but there are always difficult times. And you've been discussing these subjects as the community leader that you are. You've been in Washington, D.C. and meeting with so many people in politics there and now in South Florida. So you, you do have a good perspective of different viewpoints. What comes to mind when you think of the state of affairs in Washington as a whole? It's really hard to answer uh, a question about the state of affairs in Washington because Washington is so big, encompasses so many people, and there are so many efforts going on at any one time. I, I think there really are a lot of uh, focused, bright, and intelligent people that are working on any one issue at a time, whether it's uh, Israeli relations, whether it's energy policy, uh, but it's hard to know whether they're coordinated and whether they're actually going to get to a decision point. And I think that is probably the most frustrating thing for uh, someone who's outside of government uh, or outside of the uh, policymakers to understand is that we don't really understand or we can't see when they get to a, a, a critical junction. We don't recognize it. Uh, I hope that people in Washington do. Uh, I hope that most of them know what they're doing and have the uh, ability and the resources uh, and the ethics and the intentions to make it happen, that they're not uh, bettering their own uh, interests uh, at the expense of Americans, at the expense of their uh, various constituencies, I'm not always sure that's happening. I'd like to change topics and ask you a little bit about technology. You are in the cutting edge of technology in your specialty medical field, in dental implantology and so forth. And uh, on the other hand, we see in our society today the explosion uh, in other areas of technology, including communications, mass media, uh, television, and people texting and communicating more today than they did 20 years ago, certainly. Do you feel that there is an erosion of social values or some tendency for greater superficiality among the masses because they're so distracted by technology? It's a very interesting question because my daughter uh, recently graduated from college with a major in communications and uh, I sort of vicariously followed her projects and some of her courses uh, as she went through and uh, there are certain aspects of that tech where technology has eroded uh, communications for instance uh, many young people don't know how to make a decision because they constantly ha will consult with a parent or a friend or somebody else uh, without making a decision themselves. So uh, the ability to sort of independently think and problem solve probably has been eroded a little bit with this uh, easy access to communications. On the other hand, uh, it has also allowed people that ordinarily would lose track of each other to stay in contact, whether it's close contact or more distant contact. Uh, but it certainly has bound people together that, that ordinarily would have drifted apart. Uh, I happen to love the explosion of technology. Uh, I am not particularly adept with uh, iPhone or some of the more advanced social networking uh, features, but I do use technology in my uh, practice. I think that technology is an answer to many of the uh, medical issues that face us. Uh, I think technology is going to help us with energy uh, policy and getting away from our dependence on petroleum. Uh, I drive an electric car. I love the whole story about the uh, uh, development of uh, electric car and transportation alternatives based on uh, technology. And in the long run, technology is what the United States has always been good at, at the innovative side of it, at the ability to put together different uh, talents and expertise and solve problems. Uh, we did it in the, uh, the, in the 50s with the transistors. We did it again in the 60s. And I hope that we continue to be able to innovate uh, for the rest of the world. We may not build everything here, but we should be able to create the ideas behind uh, these new products. And speaking of electric cars, I was just mentioning to Laurie a moment ago in the prior segment of the, on this show uh, that there was this car made by GM. In fact, there's a documentary called Who Killed the Electric Car? And it was a very elegant car, but they destroyed them all. So I'm glad to hear that uh, they're bringing some of these uh, technologies back into the forefront because that would be just great. I'd like to see intelligent solutions implemented in our world. That's the way we have to progress, uh, by intelligent solutions, by leveraging our uh, knowledge and abilities into new areas. Uh, 
the days of us uh, being able to manually do everything are pretty much gone, I think. And uh, we should use our resources, which include technology, to allow us to improve uh, our services, to improve the quality of our lives. Uh, technology by itself is, is not an end unto itself. It should allow us to do more things. It should enable us uh, to live better lives. And I hope that it continues. Before we conclude this interview, I know that you've been involved in so many community endeavors throughout the country, so many causes that you've supported and are active in. What message would you like to convey to our audience with regards to the social responsibility of the individual to be in touch with our society and do good? Anybody who has had the good fortune to prosper has an obligation to uh, help causes and others who haven't had that luck. Uh, and there are all sorts of ways to give back and, and to help others achieve that. I'm very involved in education uh, for graduate uh, dental residents. Uh, I've been doing that for the last 13 years and uh, I really, it, it's a core part of what I do. It's certainly not for the compensation I get because it's virtually none. Uh, but that for me has been a big part of my ability to give back. I also have been active in community affairs, in Jewish affairs, uh, in uh, raising money for different uh, uh, research for different diseases. And I think that we all have to find an area that interests us or an area that speaks to us to be able to put some effort into that. Uh, it is fulfilling. Uh, it is what uh, the mark that we make on the world, uh, that's what people are going to remember. and. Uh, it is our obligation. How do you see the challenges facing Israel at this odd time in history? Well, ch Israel, like the U.S., has always had challenges. Uh, sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different. Uh, and there are different combinations of these challenges that, that come up. Uh, Israel has a, a huge challenge with its neighbors. Uh, that's no different from uh, the War of Independence, from 67, from uh, 56, from whenever uh, the uh, neighbors have masked and threatened Israel's existence. Unfortunately, uh, the methods of destruction or the uh, uh, nuclear weapons, etc., that represents a real existential kind of challenge, and uh, there can't be any uh, question about who's going to prevail in that kind of uh, conflict. Or, God forbid, there is a conflict. There's got to be an avoidance of that conflict. But um, so the, the stakes keep rising. Uh, the challenges are there. Uh, if Israel's neighbors could envision uh, or absorb the benefits that Israel provides, uh, the technology, the education, their ability to leverage their very limited resources uh, into a very impressive uh, economy and lifestyle. Uh, if the Arab world could appreciate that without being threatened by it, it would be fabulous. But it, that's also very utopian. And um, it doesn't seem that uh, rational thought is all that prevalent in the Middle East. This unfortunately is true and uh, so much more could be achieved in mutual cooperation. All of these issues, the Palestinian refugee problem and all others uh, could be resolved uh, in mutual cooperation with a f with a, within a fraction of the money that they spend uh, on war and destruction and terrorism. They could really have solved all of these problems and uh, then we'd have a much more inspiring situation. I'd like to, on that positive note, thank you very much for being with us thank today. It's a real pleasure. You. Thank you, sir. I'll be right back. This concludes our special show for today from On Location in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.